Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back. This is part two of the mix that I started yesterday of Lead Boots by a TV for Dogs. Um, old friends of mine that have a band. I think I've known them since I was probably like 15 or 16 or something like that. Um, so, man, that's a lot of years. Anyway, um, let me switch immediately to the Cubase screen. Um, I'm doing this on uh, on Twitch as well and on Facebook, and it will also be put up on YouTube afterwards. In fact, we had a funny thing yesterday with uh, the drums being detected when it was put up on YouTube. A bit of the drums that was uh, being played around got detected as another song, uh, got detected as good times, and I had a copyright claim which I'm disputing. So that's um, that's interesting. Hello, Will. You're watching there on uh, on Twitch. Um, oh, you said the best bit about your day at the moment uh, are my streams on Twitch. Oh, thank you very much. So, yeah, uh, go to twitch.tv slash Domini if you're um, on Facebook. And uh, there we go. You can see it now. It's come up on the screen if you're watching on Facebook. Um, and follow me there. I'm also streaming on there and doing stuff. Uh, it's a lot better platform for streaming, in my opinion. Anyway, enough of the waffle. Say hi if you're watching on Facebook. Um, I'm going to play you where we got up to yesterday but first just before I do that I'm going to show you a couple of things that I wanted to tweak I was having a listen through um, and I was having a listen through to the drums and to my ears there was just something a little bit muddy, although on their own they sound pretty punchy. I think in the track they weren't. I just wanted a touch more punch. So I just wanted to do two things, one of which I put one of these uh, EQ, um, EQP1A plugins over the top, the Pultec simulator, and I've done this kind of this low boost but more of an attenuate thing with it centered around 30 hertz with quite a high bandwidth. And then I've just done a tiny boost at 8K and to keep the level the same um i've just pulled it down a touch so have a listen to the difference when i put this on back again Now that sounds lovely to my ears, so I just want to show you, I've put that on, I did that about an hour ago, um, I was just messing around setting up and it just sounded a little bit muffled in the track. And the other thing I want to do on the um, SSL compressor, which is going over the whole of the kit, is um, I want to bring the release time down. And then I'm going to bring it down. Again, just making it a tiny bit more punchy. So with that in mind, I'm going to unsolo the drums. I'm going to take it back to the beginning, mute my microphone, and play the song. So here goes.
there we go. That's the song so far with those uh, little tweaks that I just did there. Um, hello to Matt, who may have gone now already. Um, hello, Paul, the drummer, Paul Jarrett there. He's on the Facebook chat. Um, right, let's get stuck in on some stuff. I don't know whether Neil is with us or not. If you're there, Neil, say hello. Um, Will says, sounds brilliant. Thank you very much. Can you hear the difference from yesterday? Because you thought it sounded mixed when I played you the unmixed version. So can you hear the difference so far, Will? Um, there's always a few seconds delay, particularly uh, on Facebook, but Twitch is usually better. Um, right, let me um, do a couple of things, next few things. So Neil informed me last night in a phone conversation um, that the low intro, this track here, that needs to... Um, Apparently, that needs to kind of sound a little bit telephony. So I've got just the thing for that, which will be nice. Uh, Will says, absolutely, sounds much better already. Excellent. I'm glad you can tell the difference. So let me um, whack a sort of a telephone type effect over this. Um, so I'm going to use that CLA effects again. Um, I've got this on a stereo track. I'll show you why in a second, but I want to put some stereo stuff on it. I just find this uh, plugin really convincing for doing all the sort of the telephone stuff. Hello, Tim. Tim, uh, Tim Luck there on the stream, listening to the stream. Um, so that. That's the low end one with the telephone effect. And what I want to do on that now is I'm going to put my uh, my favourite room machine over it. Um, I'm going to turn up the dry, just a little bit of wet on that. So that's now in there like that. Um, so that's the first thing I want to do. Right, there's some other stuff that I want to do before I start mixing in some of these other guitars and some of the other vocals. Um, I want to play with the vocals a little bit from yesterday because um, I thought they sounded nice, but there's a few things that are, are annoying me. So let me just solo them for a second. Whatever were they thinking when they let you on the street with fire in your eyes and lead boots on your feet? So I hinted yesterday that I wanted to use some DSers, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to whack a DSer, just a standard Cubase DSer, into each of those vocals before the compressor. So we're going to try, I'm, I'm not even going to change any of the settings at the moment. I'm just going to see on the default setting whether we lose some of that s in it. Whatever were they thinking when they let you on the street with fire in your eyes and lead boots on your feet. Yeah, that seems to be working. Let me turn it up a bit. The cocktail you've been drinking Couldn't taste that sweet But you shout and you scream Grind your teeth and stamp your feet From deep within the cage That you made for yourself yeah, that sounds uh, that sounds a lot cleaner on the top end to me, and then I could probably turn up the top end without it getting out of control. Um, <clears throat> ah, Neil's here, just in the watch party. Okay, let me uh, load up the comments for this um, 
for this watch party of yours, Neil, so that I can join in on those comments as well. Oh, this is going to get nice and uh, nice and confusing. Forgive me for a second while I do this. I'm going to play the song again from the beginning with that um, with that vocal, or from where the vocals come in with that vocal. <laughs> Cool. So I think that sounds a lot nicer. I've also managed to get up the uh, the comments now for this other watch party that's happening. So um, let's hope it doesn't kill my bandwidth too much. Uh, yes, I can see you. That is that is cool. Right. Let me move this one over just so I can see it all, and then I can see everyone's comments all at the same time. Uh, Enzo is on there. Missed your live the other day and ended up commenting thinking it was a live, like a complete numpty. <laughs> People do that all the time. No, that's absolutely fine. Um, yeah, someone said, on another stream, could you show me how to make the Wish You Were Here radio guitar effect? Yes. Well, actually, it's not too different to some of the stuff that I was doing there at the beginning on that guitar, to be honest. It's just like a an EQ that's, that's taking out the bottom and the top end and then adding a bit of crunch. Um, I really like that... Um, plugin that does it there though this uh, CLA FX plugin um, just because it's you know it just does it someone else has worked out some more crystal algae has worked out what frequencies sound best and it's um, you know and it's it's great straight out of the box so I'm not going to argue with him on that one right so um, I'm going to leave the vocals for a second I'm going to move to this answer guitar which um, I want to do some stuff with so the first thing I want to do with this is I want to make it more gritty by trying to use some of that uh, channel strip distortion on it. Um, so let's listen to it and loop a bit. <laughs> Okay, what I might do is I might run that in parallel with that um, with that sound rack, sound rack uh, mono. Here we go. So, same as I did yesterday when I was comparing the plugins, I can put a, uh, a parallel split here, and I can have one with nothing on it, and I can have another one with the uh, with an LN NLS channel on it. Uh, I can switch the mic on on that. So if I solo that, that will be the same as what we just heard there. Uh, nothing coming through. Oh, I need to actually turn on the channel. That would help. Buzzed it up in a in a nice way. Just introduced a little sort of buzziness to it, which will make sense with what I want to do on some of the backing vocals as well in a bit. When they let you on the street with fire in your eyes, let boots on your So I'm going to push a little bit more top into it. 
I might take some of this boost down on the bottom just a tiny bit, not too much, and I want to boost a little bit more of this top, and I might move it up to 4K. So, uh... <laughs> Do, uh, I do like that sound. Right, so what I'm going to do next with these, I'm going to do some panning. I'm going to do some automation on the panning. So uh, when I want to automate something in Cubase, I just click on the little arrow here. Uh, I can expand that out and you can see what you want to automate. But I'm going to go for a standard panner. Click on R so it's reading the automation. And then on these bits here... Where he does those bends. Oh, that sounds great to my ears anyway. Hope you like it, Neil. But um, <laughs> I'm going to pan these left and right. So, um, so one happens in one ear and then the other in the other. And then go back to the centre. Again. Why is it that it always wants to be one over and I have to expand it out to get the perfect centre? There we go. Oh, I found it. It's always annoying. Anyway, so now that will be like this. So I wonder whether these, I want to do the same panning because there's kind of two in each where it goes. Would it be too much to go left? Uh, before we do that, I'm just going to mark the center point at the end there. Uh, would it be too much to go left? Uh, let me turn off snap. There we go. And I can go totally right with that. And then back to the left for this one. Let's move that over so it catches that one. Back to the left for this one. Then up to the right. Am I getting this right? Hang on. So we're going left, right, left, right. And I've gone right, left. Okay, well, let's just change it around. I'm not, not that bothered. Um, yeah, I've screwed that up. But you never know, it might sound quirky. Sometimes accidents are the most intriguing things. So then there's that there. And then sort of back to centre. So let's see how that sounds. So be. I'm glad you like it, Neil. So that sounds pretty. Uh, hang on, did I get it right in the end? No, I didn't. No, I've made one of them the wrong way round. <laughs> right, I'm just going to uh, easily. Uh, easily fix that. I just um, oh now it wants me to stretch it. I don't want to stretch it. I just want to move it. Bloody thing, right? Let's move it around like that. I'm having a uh, I'm having a weird moment where I've screwed this up, but um, there we go. That's all right. 
that seems uh, reasonable now. It's because I went back after the other ones there, but anyway. Hey, you're watching me make mistakes live. Okay, that's cool. And then you get this. Which will be in the centre. So we're going to do left and right on these again. Uh, I'm just checking something here. Yep, that's all good. Okay. And that's all good there. Sorry, I was just checking the streams were working. Got a red light come up on something. Uh, okay, so I'm going to go left on this one. Right on this one here. Same thing here. And then I should be able to turn these up quite a lot because when you kind of put them in the stereo... Oh, I did it again, didn't I? There we go, back to the centre. Um, yeah, uh, so I can, I can um, turn these up because when they're only coming through one speaker, you know, I could probably get a bit more aggression out of them. Um, because this is done to a click, I should be able to move all this automation over. That would be nice, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it be lovely if I could copy that automation and uh, go to here and get it somewhere close. No, that's not going to work. I wanted to uh, copy the automation, something I've never done before in Cubase. Yes, I needed to select that. Wow, that's cool. Okay, so now uh, I can select all of that and just move it all over a bit. I don't want to move it vertically, I just want to move it. There we go. Okay. Last one a little bit weird or not? Yeah, I think that was a little bit too early on that one. So uh, I'll move them over. Just want to move them. Stop giving me things to. I don't want to tilt them. I just want to move them. Man, this is harder than I expected it to be. I was putting another point and I'll move that. Oh no, it doesn't want me to move that other, it wants me to stretch. I don't know what's going on. Maybe I've clicked something within the software that's um, changing the way it usually works because usually I can just do that stuff really easily. But anyway, so yeah, I'm just going to move the four points. So there we go. So I've panned those the way I want them. I don't think they need to come up actually, they sound good. I'm quite happy with the way all that is. Um, next, next, next. Let's do the next guitars here. I'm going to get this fuzz and this uh, fuzz high and fuzz in. Let's have a listen to those. So I'm going to solo fuzz high. Oh, that's nice.
What was that played on, Neil? What was that low one played on? Was that the SG? Oh, that sounds great. So let's, um, I'm just going to turn these up full for the second and make sure that they are being sent to the All Music group. So let's start with this one. I'm going to do the same as I've been doing on the other guitars. I'm going to use the um, e uh, the one A EQ. I'm going to put after that um, just a standard. Um, I'll use the Q10 just in case I want to do anything else, but um, realistically, all I'm going to do is just put a uh, high pass on it, maybe about sort of 80 hertz, something like that. 80, there we go. Try to see which frequency is best. Cool. Something about hundred that I like. Boost a tiny bit more in. Get that 3K in there as well. And this will also need... Um, just gonna don't want to take out as much, just a little bit. So I'm going to pan them a tiny, tiny bit, but not a huge amount. We're talking like maybe th uh, 13. Unlucky for some, but lucky for me. Oh, yeah, Neil said it was the SG with the P90s.
still something in that that I just want to pull out. I'll do it in this. There's a low mid frequency. <laughs> amount of that I think Okay, right, I'm going to do something here, which, because um, immediately I was getting some cloudiness behind those vocals, and I like those guitars. I like these. But really, what I would usually do is automate them to come down a bit over this area where the vocals are. But I'm going to try something else first, uh, which may or may not work, but it would work in other circumstances. So um, it's just something worth considering if you're in a situation where there's a vocal and a guitar and they might be clouding each other a little bit. So I'm going to create a group here, which I'm going to call Fuzz. Um, it makes the groups at the bottom, which is always annoying. I wish they made them in place, but there you go. Uh, there might be an option for that that I don't know about. Let me know if you do. Um, so I'm going to send this, these guitars here to Fuzz. And then I'm going to send Fuzz to All Music. Um, and I'm going to use a, a simple compressor. I could use any compressor um, out there. But I just don't really... I'm not looking for something with character. I just want it to get turned down. So um, I'm going to probably use the R comp, and this is a stereo track, this group. This group is a stereo group, not a stereo track. And I'm going to side chain this here with, uh, with the vocal. So I'm just going to select one of the vocals, not with all the effects and everything else. I'm just going to select, because uh, the low and the high are basically always singing at the same time. So I'm just going to select the low vocal there and send that to the, uh, the fuzz side chain and I'm going to send it pre-fader so if I turn this up and down it's not going to make any difference to uh, to this and then this fuzz guitar will be being triggered by the vocal the the compressor for the fuzz guitar should I say will be triggered by the vocal now nothing will happen at the moment because there's no ratio So you can see the vocals are there um, coming through. So I'm going to bring the threshold down there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the attack time really quick on it and the release time, I don't know, 30, 40 milliseconds, something like that. And um, basically, when he stops singing, as, as the vocal gets quieter, the guitar will come up and fill the space, and then it will be pushed down by the vocal automatically.
So what I'm going to do there is I'm going to bring the release up a little bit so it's not as drastic. Uh, I'm going to keep playing with that ratio and the threshold till I'm happy with it. But it is kind of doing what I wanted it to do, which is good. <laughs> That answer guitar at the moment is putting me off hearing what it's doing, so I'm just going to mute that for a second. Yeah, I like that. That's uh, that's following it a little bit and just being subtle. It's just taking it down and allowing the vocal through in the right places for me. Um, I might tweak. I might pan them a touch more apart. I'm not sure. Um, I'm definitely going to be doing some reverby stuff on guitars in a bit, but we'll get to that when we get to that. Um, right, the stabs here. Let me put that answer guitar back in as well. The stabs here. Uh, why are they not playing? Oh, I haven't got them signed to go out of anywhere. Well, b instead of assigning them twice, I'm going to make a group for them because they're always playing at the same time. So, um, I'll call these stabs. And then I'll send these both to the stabs group. and send these stabs to all music. <coughs> nice. So these sound like there's something that needs to be quite super wide. Uh, let me just loop a bit of that. So they're standing out nicely like that. I'm just going to loop this bit. Right. Right, what I might try and do here with these right stabs is I'm going to see if I delay them by 20 milliseconds um, and then I just delay the first stab by minus 20 milliseconds. So we're kind of like pulling this this way and pulling that that way, but just by a touch. <laughs> So 
tiny bit of difference if I do that, but um, I wouldn't say huge. Um, because it's not like it's just the same thing uh, being copied and then kind of shifted to the right so you get this really wide thing because it's th two things that are being played the same. In fact, I know this might be sacrilege to you, Neil. I know you're watching. But I'm just going to try and mute one of them and see whether I actually get the sound that I'm looking for better if I just have an absolute duplicate and then I make one 20 milliseconds back and one 20 milliseconds the other way. Because it might give me this kind of this attacking from the left and the right thing that I'm looking for. Okay, let me just um, delete that duplicate and go back to the original one and see. So I've got up to 40 milliseconds pushed each way. I've got one a little bit early and one a little bit late. Um, I might take out even more bottom end off it. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Pushed each side like that. I think that's sounding nice. Um, answer guitar, where's that going? Just checking that's got stereo out, so I need to do something with that, but I'm actually going to add it to... Um, I'm not going to add it to group, actually. Um, I'll do that if I want to. I'll do that in a minute, but I'm going to send that to all music so as I'm breaking my own rules. And because all music's a little bit... Um, quieter as a group. I just need to turn this up a touch. just pulled that fuzz down a touch there but I think that sounds great right the last guitars that I didn't mix in which I just turned on for the playback last night are the solos and um, I'm going to create a group for these immediately um, because there's four four tracks of solo and I want to get the blend between them right maybe EQ them individually but then be able to turn them up and down and put any effects on them as a group. So let me just move that group to there. I need to color that group blue because it's a guitar. Um, solo. 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 So there's four parts to this solo that he's done. And the solo needs to go to all music. Um, there's four parts to this solo. There's a, a left and a right. And there's also... And there's this fuzz. Hello, Sarah. 
So we've got um, four guitars to blend nicely together, and I'm going to filth up some stuff, I think. Um, so let's, let's get a basic blend between those four. So let's get them all soloed. <laughs> So that treble lead is doing a lot of the heavy lifting there. Let's have a look at this extra lead. See, to my ears, the extra lead is adding some center support, but it's actually the treble lead that's doing the, the most amount of interesting stuff in the middle. And then, of course, these solos are panned left and right. Um, let's whack the favorite EQ of the day on it. I'll right, just loop this round. So on this one here that's called treble lead, um, I'm going to see um, if a parallel split, same as I did on that other guitar with that, that um, channel sort of drive, will work nicely. I'm on the right one, aren't I? Yes, I am. I'm on treble lead. So sound grid. Sound grid? Um, no. No, I've got the name of it wrong. What was it? Sound grid is the live thing, isn't it? Now they're all open. Um, studio rack, that was it, not sound grid. Having a crazy moment there. Uh, and I want the mono one, not the stereo one. Loads of confusion going on. Right, let me go to parallel split turn both of those on and I'm going to put the NLS channel in there and just have a listen to what I'm doing on that <laughs> So I'm not a massive fan of this one called Extra Lead. I don't. It's not adding anything huge for me uh, because it's too similar to the left and the right and not cool enough for that. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm actually just going to delay it by uh, 80 milliseconds. So I'm just going to move it by 80 milliseconds so it becomes a delay. <laughs> I 
going to put its own EQ on it. So now what I need to do is push up those lefts and the rights because that bottom is just going crazy over it. Okay, since I put these um, fuzz guitars in over that solo bit, they're just getting too messy there. Now, I could side chain them again, but I'm not going to for this particular one. So I'm just going to mark out at the top here how long this solo lasts for. And I'm going to do a very simple thing. I'm just going to cut the wave here and here. I'm just going to select them and pull them right down. See how much I want. Okay, so I'm going to bring that back a bit and have this crossfade in a slightly different place. But yeah, the, bringing these down made loads of space for the um, for the leads. Um, It's just not standing out at the beginning. I wonder if I need to turn these down. When he goes up higher, it's nice having these guitars in, but I wonder if these just need to come down even more. And we'll just have it kind of work its way up in stages. And then if I do that and then they'll crossfade um <clears throat> and it's it's a lot easier than automating it because i haven't really got any uh, uh well i've got that compressor but that's that's side chain that's not that kind of thing so i haven't got anything that's doing any kind of compression that's going to bring these back up again at the moment oh,
So I'm definitely going to do some automation on this. I'm going to click the R button so it reads the automation, and I'm going to start it loud, but then bring it down. Start it loud and bring it down. Ah, Neil says, you'll be pleased to know that Michael Tippett wrote a piece entitled The Blue Guitar. Well, that's good, because guitars should all be blue. Apart from gold ones, I like gold ones. Hello, Trevor, how you doing, mate? Okay. Um, I'm going to come back to that solo in a bit, but um, yeah, that's somewhere close to what I'm looking for. Um, if you press Z in Cubase... It uh, expands the track you're working on. If you press Z, it returns it back. So if you've got something where the screen's all over the place and you've got all different, um, you know, ones all brought out in different sizes and you press Z, it just concentrates on the one you're looking at. Press Z again, makes them all small. Very useful. Handy hint there. Z on its own. Or as Americans say, Z. Um, right, let's get some other stuff going on here. I'm going to come back to this abstract Atmos because I'm not quite sure what to make of it yet, to be honest with you. <laughs> but um, let's get some backing vocals in. So I've already got them linked by the looks of things. So uh, let's just solo them and have a listen to them. And these, some of these go with these uh, answer guitars, so you'll hear what I mean. Hang on. Shoot! Scream! Okay, so that's the uh, that's the backing vocal part there. Um, let me move this mic a touch. Um, I'm gonna make a group for them. Which I call BPs, surprisingly, and because these are all linked. If I change them to go to BVs, and then I make BVs go to all music. Then we're going to hear the BVs. Shoot! Scream! Right, just for laziness purpose, I'm just going to put a gate on each of those. And again, because these channels are linked, we're going to have the... Uh, we're going to have the same thing happen. I should say I've got the 2A on that I had on for the lead vocals on all of them just for when I was playing back. Oh, look, four gates have opened up for all of those vocals. nice 
but you gotta be free. So I've panned them a little bit. Let's see what I've got. So these uh, these top ones here are the kind of the bottom. So if I just mute these for a minute, rather than unlinking the channels. Shout! Scream! Ooh. Oh, they're not the uh, the bottom ones. So maybe these are the bottom ones, and I've got the panning the wrong way around. Shield. Shield. Okay, so these are definitely higher in pitch, so I want them to be the wider ones of the lot. So I'll bring them out to about 74. And these lower ones can be brought in a little bit. I say 47. Yeah, that's cool. All right. Neil said, I've no idea how that sound snuck in. Well, all the background noise, it's the amount of compression I've got on them is just making them go crazy. So that's why I put a gate on it. I mean, I could trim it all out manually, but that's what gates are for. And it's a backing vocal. If it was a lead vocal, I'd probably not want to gate it, but for a backing vocal, it's fine. Um, Shout! Scream! So let's have a listen in the mix. <laughs> I want to turn the main vocals up a bit. Actually, I need to send the main vocals to all music again as well. Bad habit of mine. So let's turn all the vocals up a touch. I tell you been drinking. Couldn't taste that. So the thing is about these backing vocals is they're very nice sounding, but in an aggressive track like this, it's just not going to cut through. They, you know, we've got distortion on every guitar. We've got crunch on the room mic. We've got distortion on the bass. We got so, so these vocals have to be made to sound filthy. Um, so I'm going to try... Uh, not as filthy as the lead vocals, but I'm going to try a stereo um, NLS channel over them and click the mic button. Ooh, that's way over the top. Right. Um, I haven't got an input to... Um, so if I take it off mic, can I? Shout! Scream! Does this do anything? No, so what I need to do is... Um, I'm going to go to the mixer and I'm going to turn down on this BVs group here. Um, in the preamp section, I'm going to turn down the gain going into it by, say, 6 dB. So, hopefully that will give me enough headroom for these to not distort too much on the most basic setting. Yeah, that sounds better. Scream! Oh, I'm going to whack an EQ before I... That's sounding more like I'm looking for. Shout! Scream! Ooh. Oh, 
Oh, I see it. Sorry, Neil's just writing to me. I've no idea how that sound snuck in. No, the abstract atmosphere. Are you saying that's not part of the song? Because I thought that was just you having a crazy moment. I was thinking, has he whacked some weird sound underneath the whole, the whole thing? It's just this little moment here. It sounds like some sort of radio communication. I was thinking it was really important somehow to it. And, uh, yeah, I wasn't quite sure how it fit in that moment. But, um, anyway... So is that a mistake? Confirm with me whether that's a mistake. Right, I want to compress over the whole lot, but that's sounding the way I want. Those shouts have got enough aggression and enough bite, but they're not horrible. Um, so I'm going to go for a 76 over the top of the lot. A uh, bluey one. Bring the release down and the attack right down as well. Shoot! Scream! going to get into any effects on this for the moment like sort of reverbs or anything like that one thing i'm going to try i'm just going to move up that uh 76 compressor and i'm going to go to this um in fact i'm going to parallel split it um it's not sound grid what was it i've forgotten the name of it again uh studio studio rack not sound grid <laughs> i'm just going to go to this again and run that um CLA effects, not for any delays or reverbs for the moment, but for the tape phaser. I love the tape phaser in this. Neil's confirmed that's a mistake, right? So let's ditch that track there. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, hello, Mike. Mike Penninger. Hello, Mike. Nice to see you watching the stream. I need that high attack time on it to make them uh, not jump out too much and I need quite a solid release as well Pan them slightly more. Um, maybe I'll pan the one and two dead left and right, and these other ones out to sort of like 70 because they're still interfering a bit. But I don't just want to drive them more. 
Um, when I get into reverbs and stuff, that they will sound better. Okay, so then I've got these dupe dupes here. Dupe dupe, which there are six tracks of. Neil provided me with four, but I've taken the liberty of adding in a higher harmony by copying a couple of these and pitching them up a bit because I just really felt... Um, <clears throat> I really felt it was missing that and he kind of told me the reference point for where it was coming from and I think... Um, it just needed a third one. So if you hate them, Neil, I can mute them, but let's give it a go. Uh, so I'm going to add a group for these, same as I did the backing vocals. i call these Doop. I will colour the groups at some point, but for now, this is enough. And I also want to send that to All Music. Just as a reference point, in case anyone's wondering why I'm sending everything to a group called All Music rather than Stereo Out, is because if I've done the job properly, and I might have missed something out, but everything except the drums should end up in this group. So effectively, I'm going to have two faders to mix with at the end. It's going to be all drums and everything else, which is all music. Uh, not that drummers aren't musicians, but you know what I mean. Um... And then that way, sometimes, rather than destroying a whole mix, turning all little bits and pieces down, or if you just want to put a bit of compression over all the music or do something that's different to the drums, it's nice to effectively just have it in uh, in two faders. Um, so that's why I'm sending everything to this all-music group here. It's just something I like to do. So there's our dupes. I've got the uh, a compressor over all of them. So I'm going to very, very quickly just copy over from the BVs group the same setting to the dupes for the moment. Um, so we've got the 76. Um, whatever that was. Oh, yeah, that was the, uh, the little bit of um, phaser. I might use the phaser, I might not. We'll see. Um... In fact, for now, I'm just going to turn it off. So now our dupe group has the uh, uh, the EQ. Which I'll roll off a lot more bottom end than that. Sounds like a phone ringing. Is there something lingering on? Oh, there is. Let me just bring that in very slightly there, like that. There's a little noise at the beginning. Let's pan them round. So the let me mute all of those first. Doop, doop. So there. That's the pitch of those ones. What's the pitch of these ones? Doop. They're lower. And these ones I'm about to play here are the artificial ones that I made. Doop. So they're the highest ones. So I want the highest ones there to be panned dead left and right for the moment. Um, these are the lowest ones, aren't they? I did get that right. 
Yeah. So I'll pan them a tiny bit. Maybe they're 38. So as a general rule, and obviously there's always exceptions, but as a general rule, if the lower the pitch of the instrument, the less I pan it. So if I'm looking at backing vocals and it's like a low part, uh, um, low part, a medium part, and a, you know, middle part and a high part, then um, I will pan them so the lowest ones are the, the nearest to the middle, the middle ones are a bit further out, and then the highest ones are, are quite far. Um, purely just because low frequencies don't, you know, carry across in stereo as well as high frequencies. So it seems like a natural thing to do. Imagine like you've got a set of people in front of you in a fan and you've got the people singing the, the you know, the lowest notes in the middle and the people singing the highest notes at the, at the end. So that's why what, what I'm trying to do with this anyway is create, which is why I want there to be three parts so I could have a proper fan of, of, um, of parts. Okay, so let me take some of that distortion off them. Bit too much going on there. Or maybe I'm actually, because all these channels are linked, I'm just turn down the level going into them, even though it's quite quiet. Toppier than that. Yeah, like that. Okay, reverb time. Let's do some reverbs and all these things. Um, so I'm going to start with the guitars. I mean, not everything's in the right levels, and and with a mix, you know, I could I could come back to this tomorrow and just tweak little levels and play about. But um, so I'm not saying by the end of tonight it's going to be perfect with everything in the perfect levels, but we can add some reverbs, which I think is going to help a huge amount. So I'm going to start with these uh, low SG guitars. And I'm going to have different reverbs on different guitars and different vocals, depending on where I want them to be spatially within like, the 3D space of the mix. <laughs> so again, because they're lower in pitch than, say, these strats here... I wouldn't want to put anywhere near as much reverb on them or have, you know, a long reverb on them <clears throat> because it will just get muddy very, very quickly. So let me try something on them, uh, which I may not keep. Um, I'm going to go for that Sunset Sound Studio reverb. And I'm just going to go with one of their live rooms. And let's see what it sounds like. Too long. Oh, 
I like the Studio 2 ISO booth. It's nice and tight. It's nice and short. Just adds a bit of space to it. Um, don't want uh, much pre-delay. There's a 20 millisecond pre-delay. In fact, I don't really want any pre-delay at the moment. We'll see whether we can get away with any because I want these to be really close. <laughs> I'm going to see what that would be like if I put the compressor on the guitar after the reverb. So we're compressing the guitar and the reverb together like it was a natural room sound that we were compressing. Touch a pre delay just 10 milliseconds just to so you can actually hear it because I'm struggling to hear the reverb much now. Yeah, that's nice. So it's kind of subtle on that one, not too much, just kind of sounds like you've got the amp in the room and it's, it's got a bit of room. Now, the strats I'm going to go a bit further on. Take a little bit of this bottom end out, actually. Right, we've got a bit of reverb or something going on on, on that. I think that must be recorded on the channel because I haven't added any of that. little delay or something. I'm just gonna move the compressor up to put the That's got more of a room sound, and they're pushed left and right. Yeah, so we've got a bit of space in that. I might back that one off a touch. But, um, yeah, we've given the two sort of main left and right guitars there a little bit of... Um, a little bit of space for themselves. Um, these edgy ones. Yeah, I want them to have a little bit more than the strats. But then some of the other stuff, like the fuzz and whatever, I don't want to do anything on. I think that will um, that'll make them just sound a bit, <laughs> a bit muddy. Uh, so I use the same reverb again. Really like this reverb. Um, so so on these ones I'm pushing the pre-delay more so the reverb sounds like it's further away and I'm bringing it down a bit Yeah, they'll be different from the strap. So now they're all in three different spaces. These are quite close. These are left and right and further away. And these are, well, a little bit further away, just but they're still in the, sort of the same room as you. 
and then these are like right at the wide far bits of the room and and you know you're you're not getting the reverb till quite after the sound Right, this here, this overhanging SG, it's only coming in on one side. Um, I'm sure it was intended, but it's annoying me a tiny little bit. So I'm going to get rid of it for now. time on those gates a little bit um, higher because they're really jumping in. Might want to align them a little bit as well. I think they're just a touch out of uh, out of line with each other. Um. Gonna nudge them a bit by eye. <clears throat> so let's zoom in. I'm gonna start with the first one. Also turn snap off. So that plosive is sort of at the same place on all of them. Put them on the bar line. Right, the oohs are fine. Just the, the shouts. So let's see if that's solved that problem or not. Much better. Much better. How dare I what, Neil? Fix some vocals? Never. <laughs> it's one of those things that doesn't get talked about much in music. But, um, you know, there's a lot of records in the old days where you couldn't do stuff like that and people would just go over and redo it. But then you'd be scared to go over something in case you don't get it the same again. So there was a lot of kind of making do with things. But nowadays we can just, you know, tweak something and put it in the right place or whatever and, and people do do that I mean you, you don't want to end up with a singer that, that can't sing and you have to tune and nudge every single note but if someone's done a good take and they just need to nudge, nudge you know the odd word or something like that I really don't see it's not like it's an immoral thing to do or anything a lot of people get really funny about these things um, I do it to myself all the time you know I nudge little bits of my vocals or you know if I finish if I do a great guitar solo and then I finish on a note and it's really really great and then right at the end of it I just go a tiny bit flat you know am I going to redo the whole thing again or redo the end just for a note no I'll just nudge like that because you know if it's overlapping with the vocal or something you don't hear it I'll just you know nudge it a little bit why not um that's why I sound so good on recordings and so bad when I'm doing streams of playing guitar because <laughs> Because you'll hear when you hear me in a recording, you'll hear the nudged version. 
Um, right, so I'm going to copy them to the other places because I've nudged them. So I want them to... to be the same. I'm not sure if that's the right place. Um, looks like it. Nice. That worked. And uh, I'll do the same here. Right, that's much tighter. They're now banging with the guitar, so that's sounding really good. Um, yeah, so where was I? I was doing reverbs, wasn't I? I didn't want any reverbs on that. Solo, I might put some reverbs on. Um, I want to do some reverbs on these backing vocals. Shoot! Scream! Uh, I'm not going for the Sunset Sounds one. For vocals, I actually prefer the plate in this, which is actually, you know, not the most expensive of all the reverb plugins. There's the H reverb, which is apparently a lot better. But for vocals, I just can't beat this big warm plate. I start with the big warm plate and then just kind of tweak from there. Um, Sometimes I'll change it to plate two as well, which is nice. Isn't it? Shoot, scream. Oh. A nice bit of pre-delay on that, on the vocal. Shoot, scream. Oh. Dampen the high end a bit bring the mix down because it comes up because I've got it before the compressor so you don't really hear the reverb when he's singing but you hear the reverb after he's sung which is lovely So I'm going to copy that reverb over to the dupes, but I'm going to go a bit more extreme on those in the dupes. Um. <laughs> so a longer. More pre-delay. So you really hear the dupe dupe and then you hear the swell of the reverb happen afterwards. And I'm going to thin it out quite a lot. I'm going to pull out, I'm going to really get rid of some of those uh, low frequencies and put some more high in the reverb on this. That's lovely. That's lovely.
I think that's sounding really good. I'm really enjoying that. I mean, obviously, an ear break, I want to probably turn up and down the backing vocals and tweak some dupes and whatever. There was one bit I remember in the chorus, I was talking with Neil on the phone about this. Um, Beam, grind your teeth and stamp your feet from deep within. It's the deep where he's got a breath. Um, it sounds like he's singing steep at one point. So I'm going to try and just manually trim out some of this and see whether that solves the problem. Stamp your feet deep. I do need a touch of that. From deep From deep Right, it's on that one, isn't it? From deep within So I need the from and then I'm chopping out the S. There's like a there's not an S, but it's like a breath that sounds like an S on the treble one. Okay, so I know what I'm doing on the others now. Oh no, I didn't want that to crossfade. Bloody thing. doing it there as well. I've got a feeling one of these vocals was copied over. <clears throat> and finally the last chorus. Actually maybe they won't copy over because that one's a lot more pronounced than the other one. And I can see some differences in the wave file, so maybe I'm accusing Neil of being lazier than he is. I apologise wholeheartedly, Neil, and I won't do it again. So final thing I want to do on these lead vocals is I want to try a bit of that plate reverb. I'm nowhere near as much as I've got in the backing vocals, but... Um, because I've got that delay on it, but um, when no one's keeping score, no matter what you've got, you'll always need some more. <laughs> Teeth and stamp your feet from deep within the cage that you may for yourself that you've got to be free. Yeah, I like the plate on that, but loads of pre -lay. I just want to get the reverb well out the way of the vocal, I don't want it to interfere at all. Whatever were they thinking when they let you on the street with fire in your eyes and lead boots on your feet? The cocktail you've been drinking couldn't taste that sweet, but you shout and you scream, grind your teeth and stamp your feet.
cocktail you've been. There's a click on the. The cocktail you've been. The cocktail you've been drinking. A little mismatch between the two, I think, on the. So, um. I'm just hearing that C. Now we've got the reverb on it. The mismatch is slightly jarring. Let me just try and align them a touch. See if that. The cocktail you be. The cocktail you. Let me trim that in so we don't get that first. The cocktail. The cocktail you've been drinking. Yeah, that sounds better to me. I'm not getting the clash of the two C's on the cocktail. Last thing you want is a double cock from Neil Luckett. Trust me, I've just heard one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, select all of these backing vocals here, these wave files here, and um, they're not driving as much as these ones. So I'm just going to up the gain on the files a little bit so they'll push into the compressor a bit more and hopefully sound as fat as the earlier ones. <laughs> Maybe I just need to turn up the channel. Maybe they're so compressed that that's not doing anything. Um. It's an EQ thing, I think I, the volume's all right. I just need to bring up the mix. Yeah, just bring up some of those upper mids and that will poke, poke them through a bit more. That's better, a little bit further up, I'll push something and I could hear the backing vocals more. It's not that I want them massively loud, it's like one of those sort of Foo Fighters things where he does his ooze and they're actually quite subtle and nice in the background and they fill a space, but you don't want it to be so nondescript that they're, you know, you might as well not have them in the mix. Um, I think I'm at the point now where I want to listen through to the whole thing start to finish. Um, let me save, mute my mic and listen through and uh, yeah, because I've been doing another almost two hours on this, so I think I'm 
almost done for the night. If anything um, needs tweaking, I think it would be a case of a half hour, an hour air break and come back and do it. But I think all the main components of what I want to do are in there. So I'm going to mute the mic, play the song start to finish. And uh, yeah, let's see if I go and grab for any faders and try and turn anything up or down. I'm also going to stand in a different place and kind of listen to it somewhere else. So I might disappear off camera. I'm sure you don't need to see my ugly side of my ugly mug to listen back to the song. Right, I'm waffling. Here we go. Okay, the first thing I uh, did when I was standing up and listening to it and tweaked is I pulled down the uh, all music so that just by half a dB just to allow the drums a little bit more space and um, <clears throat> and yeah and then I turned the vocals up a tiny bit the main lead vocals everything else is sounding really good I'm really happy with it there might be some muddiness amongst the guitar mix that I want to sort out with some fresh ears there's one more thing I want to try so um, this could be a crazy idea that, that doesn't really go anywhere but let's see <laughs> Right, so it's at that point there, when that bit of the solo comes in, I want to cut 
these two. And um, put them on another track, duplicate them, not move them, but actually uh, duplicate them. Can I not uh, create new tracks like that anymore? Or is that why is Cubase not letting me do that? Ah, there we go. Yeah, and it will create two more tracks for me down here. We should have all the same settings and be grouped and everything like that. So at this point in the solo, I want to have something happen to these guitars that's different. So um, RM Solo 1 and RM stands for Ring Modulator. Um, so let me solo these two and get these round in a loop. For some reason I really think we need a ring modulator here. Because I can almost hear it coming through. I mean, with the fuzz, it's almost got a ring modulator type thing, but I want to... Uh, have I got a ring modulator? Yes, good. That would have been bad if I didn't have one. Um, not quite like that. I haven't used this one before, so I'm just playing about and seeing. Yeah, so I want... That's more. Right. Let's copy that to the other side. make the setting slightly different on the other side. So what I'm now going to do is pull out a load of bottom end on that. Um, so it's really thin. And copy that over to this one here. Now I'm going to push them a tiny bit, uh, maybe like 40 milliseconds on that side. I say a tiny bit, quite a lot actually. So they're almost like the, the, they're a little bit delayed. So we're getting a delay from those left and right guitars, but it's going to be a weird delay that doesn't sound like a, the same thing coming back. I really like that. I hope you do, Neil. Just brings out that kind of natural thing that's already in the guitar, but I'm just adding a bit more of it in artificially and it just sounds throaty and sort of, oh, I don't know, so much angst in it. I love it. Um, 
Right, I'm going to start again. I'm going to play right through from the beginning for the last time, and I think I will be done for the night. So unless I make any major changes or have any other crazy brainwaves, uh, this will be it, the final playthrough, and then I'll say goodbye and see you in the next stream. So here goes. I'm pretty happy with that. The only thing I would do is maybe lift the lead vocals a little bit, but to be honest, I want to check that in my car and have some fresh ears. I'm not going to, uh, uh, yeah, I'm not going to mess around with it. What are people saying? So Neil said it's uh, sounding fab maestro. Paul says, love it, David. Uh, Neil says, fab, um, sleep, sleep the sleep of just Dave. Okay, I don't know what that means. Sleep the sleep of just Dave. I'm sure it's a quote from something I don't know, and I'm making a complete idiot of myself re reading out what Neil said there on the stream. Um, yeah, Will says, sounding like the real deal now. That's great. Yeah, it's uh, it's really sounding good. So um, I'm quite happy with that. I'm going to leave it there for now. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, please, if you're watching on uh, YouTube or even if you're watching currently on Switch or Facebook or wherever else, please subscribe and like and get notified for videos and all that stuff. If you want me to mix a song for you, um, then, you know, send me an MP3 of where you're at with it at the moment. And if I think I can do something to it, you know, we can come to an arrangement. Um, generally, 
the first mix I do for an artist is free on a stream, and then I have rights to use that song to, you know, to put on my YouTube channel and everything else. Um, and then after that, you know, we had come to some negotiation if there was a whole album to mix or whatever. So, um, yeah, get in touch if you have songs you want missing. And uh, thanks for watching. Bye.